Hi, on this week's episode, I talk about finished hats, sock yarn, wool and silk, as well as wool and bison. So if you're interested in that, stick around and we'll have a fun discussion. If you're interested, please leave a comment below this video so we can talk about what you're working on as well as what I'm working on. Hello, my name is Tiffany and I'm the dyer and maker behind Leita Valley Fiber Co. You can follow me on Instagram at Leita Valley Fiber Co. You can find my shop online, latavalleyfiberco.etsy.com. If you'd like to message me directly, you can do that, lvfiberco at gmail.com. How are you all doing today? I'm doing pretty good. Um, it's a rainy day here, or beginning to rain here in Eastern Washington, uh, but it's definitely spring-like weather, no snow currently, so. I'm excited about that. Spring is on its way. <laughs> All right. So um, let's start off with talking about a shop update. Currently this week, I'm not doing a shop update. I have ordered some fiber to come in for dyeing in April. Um, and I've ordered two new bases that you might be interested in, a bulky, and a sport weight. So I'm excited to see how those die up and those will be in the shop sometime in April. Um, so that'll be fun. I am gearing up to do a market here in May. Actually, it's through the summer, but it starts in May. So I'm gathering my, my supplies and I'm knitting a bunch of hats <laughs> as well as dyeing a bunch of yarn. So. Um, that'll be fun uh, to get geared up for that. I So there's nothing new in the shop um, as of this week. Um, but there is plenty still in there if you're interested in certain things. I did think that this week I would talk a little bit about my sock yarn specifically because I love socks. I knit a lot of socks. And um, so I thought it would be fun to share with you all what I have in my shop in case you're interested. So this sock yarn is 75% superwash merino with 25% being the recycled nylon. It is 437 yards, which means you can get a pair of socks out of one skein of yarn. Um, so this is fingering weight and it's really um, durable. So it's great sock yarn. And I currently am going to be, um, I'll show you in um, what I'm working on because um, I'm going to cast on a couple socks. So I have this color, which is called buckskin. It's a brown and this green is called hint of olive. So I really like the green one as well. Um, and then I've got purple, which is called uh, Zephyr, as well as this purple, which is called purple or gray. So this one has a little bit of gray in it as well. So it's somewhat tonal. And then for pink, I have bubble gum. And then this pale pink, called Wild Rose. Those are kind of fun. And then I guess this one is also pink. It's It was supposed to be more of red. So this is called Faded Red Barn. And it has some tonal um, colors in there as well. So a little bit of light pink. And then I have this lovely gray and it's called Storm Clouds. So those are in the shop if you're interested, um, you can check them out. Okay, let's talk about what I've been working on this week. I have 
stalled a little bit on my vest. I had some work knitting come up over the weekend, so I was busy on that. I knit two hats, and I'll insert a picture here because um, I've they've already gone off to their new home. Um, but the hats were knit out of my worsted weight yarn and um, they turned out really well. I just did a one by one rib for both of them. One of them is an adult hat and that's the green one. And then the pink and purple is a child's hat. So you can see that it's a little bit smaller here. Um, so those hats are on their, um, off to their new home. And then I went to my local yarn shop. I was looking for um, a bulky or super bulky that I could knit uh, relatively quickly some market hats. As you know, I'm doing the Deer Park Market here um, in May. And so I'm trying to think about, um, yes, I'll have my yarn there as well, but I also want to have just a little bit of product um, if people are interested in that as well. And hats seem to be very popular just from the last couple of, oh, uh, maybe a month or two months um, that I've been knitting hats. I've had a lot of requests for hats, so I've been quickly knitting. And most of them have been worsted weight. Um, so I went to the local yarn shop to see maybe if a bulky, and I don't carry currently a bulky in my shop, so I thought, oh, I'll check it out, see what it's like. And so I picked up this um, in multiple colors. Okay, so I picked up this um, Malabrigo Chunky Bulky is what it's called. It is 100% um, merino wool. You'll want to hand wash it and then lay it flat to dry. Um, it's bulky, 104 yards, which knits up to one hat. Um, so that's pretty good, actually. So after I found this, I thought, well, I can buy this yarn and a bulky yarn and then dye it myself and knit up some hats. So that's what I'm gonna do. I came home and immediately ordered some bulky yarn. I will have some in the shop for sale as well, but I'm going to, in case you're interested in knitting up a hat, um, I am going to knit some hats as well and sell them in the um, market, at the market. So that again is Malabrigo Chunky Bulky um, yarn. And I did pick up several different colors. This is a purple. And then I have this blue, which is very pretty. This is like a, um, a navy blue. It's really nice. I like it. And this yarn is somewhat tonal, so you get a little bit of um, variation in there. It's not solid which is kind of nice. And then I also have this black color and this green. So I wanted to test it out and see how fast they knit up. They're pretty quick. Um, so I guess that's chunky, bulky weight for you. And then I also have one on the needles um, that I'll talk about in um, what I'm working on. Actually, this is what I'm working on, <laughs> so I'll show you now. That's this pinky purple color. Yeah, so they knit up pretty fast. Um, I am testing out the um, gauge that I need. So this one I cast on 80 stitches for a woman's hat. Um, and the blue I cast on 84 for a men's. So we'll see. Um, um, my son wore this hat and he has a pretty big head. So it was quite stretchy and still had a lot of give left in it. So. I think that'll be great um, 
So this is a project I'm working on, a couple hats. I am working on a pair of leg warmers and um, one of the things I'm working on. So I have one completed. And I had picked up a, um, a skein of tweed undyed yarn at my local yarn shop and I ended up not dyeing it. I'm just leaving it natural. So it has all these tweedy bits in there. It's wool and tweed. So I cast on uh, 72 stitches and this goes up just under the knee. And so it's a little thicker in through here. And then I, I decreased, that's what these markers are here. It decreased a little bit to kind of narrow down around the ankle. Now, this is not a pattern <laughs> that I'm following. I'm just um, knitting. I'm doing a ribbing and then I'm knitting. <laughs> so I added in here, and for some reason, I didn't, I normally do things two at a time, especially if they're socks. Um, but for some reason I didn't do that with this and I'm not quite sure why. So I was a little worried that I would run out of yarn for both of them. So I wanted them to kind of match. So I did end up adding some yarn that I had dyed to the bottom um, and this will settle in around the ankle. So like this. Um, so it's just a light cuff. Now um, I did start the other one. I haven't um, sewn in any of the um, ends or anything like that. So it's not completely done. I did cast on. I did cast on for the other one. And again, 72 stitches I'm starting at the top and then I'll decrease down. I think I went down to 52 um, for around the ankle. So here you go. I'm doing this on double pointed needles because it's a little easier or smaller circumference. Um, I will likely have enough, um, I'm hoping, to do the whole sock. So I may, and or not sock, leg warmer. So I may come back up to this one and take out this yarn. This is about four inches. Yeah, about four inches. So I could take it back out and knit the rest of it. We'll have to see how much of this I have left. But that's kind of my hope is that um, I can get both out of here because I'm not doing a heel. Um, so I, sh I should have plenty, I don't know. But I didn't think I would, so I put in a different, um, a different yarn around the ankle. So those again are leg warmers and I'm working on those pretty, um, pretty, they're like socks. So they're, they're easy to knit because you're just knitting in the round, going around and around and around and around. So they'll knit up pretty fast. Now I did also knit a pair, actually two pairs of baby booties. And I've already wrapped those and I'm getting ready to send those off to the customer. So um, I don't have those to show. And then um, my vest, I've kind of put a pause on my vest. Uh, so I'm not gonna show you that because I haven't made it any further on it. Um, and also the woman's pair of socks where I needed to cast on the second toe and then knit. I didn't get to that either. So I'm not gonna show you um, that because I didn't get any further on it. So I am knitting a lot of hats. <laughs> so there you go. So as far as other works in progress, I am going to start um, two pairs of socks with my hand dyed yarn, uh, Storm Clouds and Hint of Olive. So I also have some mini skeins that I'm going to pair with it. And I did dye these, 
I don't, um, last episode I showed the mini skeins um, that I had and here's a yellow. So I'm, I'm gonna pair that with Hint of Olive. So this will be the toes, heels, and cuffs of this pair of socks. So that'll be fun. I am gonna wind that up today and cast on. And then for the storm clouds, I thought I would pair with this pale pink color. So yeah. Um, one thing that I am thinking of adding to the shop is a, is sock sets. Um, so on my order for this month, I ordered some more mini skeins and more sock yarn. And I'm gonna be intentional about, about the color and then the matching of, oops, <laughs> the matching of the toes. So I'm thinking it will be maybe like a Mother's Day theme. So they'll be on the, maybe the pink and purple side. Um, so that's kind of my thought on that. So I am gonna bring sock sets. So you'll buy these together as a set. So that'll be fun. Uh, a fun idea for Mother's Day, so. Um, I think that's all I'm working on for knitting. It feels like I've been really busy with the knitting. Um, so that's good. I've had a little bit of a lull with the shop and dyeing as I'm deciding what to bring in um, to the shop. Um, so that's been good. Um, I have noticed though that my hands um, have been a little um, achy, like my hands and wrists. And I don't know, I mean, I'm sure that I've increased my knitting substantially. So I'm sure that's the culprit. So I have been doing some uh, stretches and just trying to strengthen my wrists a little bit and give them a little bit of a, um, a break. So I do knit most of the day. I homeschool my son. And so when we're doing school, I'm knitting on a project um, or spinning. But since I've had some work knitting, I've been knitting mainly. Um, so they, my hands have not gotten much of a break. Um, so that's kind of something to be aware of is doing stretches. I actually was watching a podcaster, can't remember who it was, and she was recommending um, various stretches uh, to give your hands kind of a, hey, uh, a little bit of a break from the, well, and so knitting bulky, uh, yarn is way different than knitting, um, fingering weight yarn. I can knit fingering weight yarn all day long with no problems. I've never had an issue, but I think maybe because I've been knitting bulky, you're just, you're using more um, movements and uh, really pulling through. And it's just, I don't know, <laughs> that could be it. Um, but I have been knitting more of the bulky, so um, that could be why. <sighs> anyway, the problems of knitters, knitter, knitting, knitting problems. Um, so, okay, I think that's it for knitting. Let's move on to spinning and what I've been working on there. I have been working a little bit on it. Um, and this is what I have. So last week I talked about, um, I had purchased Finn, which I've never spun before. And um, I talked about how it's a little bit rougher, more rustic-y wool. Like Merino is very soft. Um, but, but Finn is a little bit rougher and, um, so it was causing some drag on my, on my hands. I had initially started, uh, I wanted to learn long draw, which you do to get, um, woolen spun yarn. I typically spin worsted and, um, so I wanted to learn a new technique, because why not? 
<laughs> um, and I thought thin would be good, but I didn't realize that the preparation is also very important um, and kind of gives you an idea of how you should be spinning. So I bought this um, comb top at my local yarn shop. I bought eight ounces, this is four. And my, my thought is to spin this with some alpaca that I also have. I haven't spun that yet, but I'll, I'm gonna two ply it together with this fin to give it kind of a little bit of a softer feel because this is pretty rough. Um, so I spun it pretty, um, pretty small in a um, worsted, worsted uh, fashion. So it didn't, because it was a comb top, it didn't allow for worsted or for woolen spinning. So this is what it would look like plied, um, a two ply. So that's actually pretty nice and I do like that. Um, so yeah, that is what I worked on this week as far as spinning. And then while I was at my local yarn shop, um, my son wanted to pick out another one of those surprise packs and I'm like, oh, okay, <laughs> I guess that would be fine. So they had three different um, packages in there and one of them I had already gotten. So I said, well, pick from these two. So he did and surprise, surprise, this is what we got. <laughs> So um, I've already lost the paper for it because he thought that since he got to pick it out, um, he got to open it. <laughs> so um, so opened it, it, he did. And then, um, I, you know, it comes with like stitch markers and a sticker and some tea um, and then some yarn or some fiber to spin. So I don't have the tag. I do know that it's silk. Um, because my husband and my son were very excited. They're like, oh, silk, have you ever spun silk before? And I said, mm, no, um, but I don't know what percentage this is uh, silk. It's silk and wool, and there is also some shiny bits in here too. So there's probably um, tinsel or, and uh, uh, is it called Angelina? Angelina, I can't remember, is the shiny parts. So I don't know what percentage is the silk, um, but it's very soft. And yeah, it's fun. So that, it's probably merino, merino and silk and tinsel, or Angelina, something like that. So. That'll be, um, I don't know when I will get to this, but um, yeah, it'll be fun to spin up for sure. Okay, another fiber that came along my way. Um, my sister had done a cross country trip here in the US and while she was away, she visited some yarn shops and in South Dakota, she came across this wool, this is from Fall River Fibers. It's in Hot Springs, South Dakota. And this particular wool is mixed with bison. So it has 25% um, bison and 75% wool. Uh, it's a roving and it's four ounces. So a roving, I was really excited. I've never spun bison before. I didn't even know it was a thing. Like, how do you collect bison fiber? That's a thing. I'm, I, I don't, you know, they talk about in Yellowstone, you're not supposed to get out of your car um, <laughs> when the bison are around. Um, so I'm not sure how they gathered it. I would imagine that during shedding season, they would maybe go along and just pick up the fiber 
uh, off the ground. I mean, that to me, that would be the safest. But, um, you know, maybe if you had a bison, I don't know. Like, I don't know anything about this farm, Fall River Fibers. Um, but you can follow them on Facebook. So maybe they would have some information about how they collect the um, fiber. Yeah, I should have got on there. That would have been fun, actually. So as I'm spinning this, maybe I'll get on there and share some information um, with y'all. So um, this is a roving. And so another thing that I was really excited about is this would allow for some woolen spinning, um, which would be fun too. So um, woolen spinning, long, long draft. Um, so I might take you along on this adventure too with a bonus episode. Um, if you guys are interested, leave a comment below and I'll put together a video of me spinning this. So it is four ounces. It's quite a lot. Like when I pulled it out, I thought, oh, this would be maybe eight ounces. But um, yeah, it seems very fluffy, doesn't it? For four ounces? I don't know. Because this is also four ounces. So yeah, it's very fluffy. So woolen spinning. Roving is great for woolen spinning. I did learn that this last week that you, you want um, roving or carded in a bat. So that is perfect because again, I think I talked about this last week, you want the fibers kind of going in the same direction, but not all of them going in the same direction. You want some where it's allows the air in. And this does, like this has a lot of air, whereas this is very flat. So this will be great for um, worsted spinning, whereas this would be great for woolen. So I am excited. What do you guys think? Uh, yeah, what do you think about bison? It's very soft. Like, I, you know, I don't know. <laughs> it's kind of an interesting, I never thought about it before, like spinning bison. I have thought about spinning like cat hair and that went, you know, I discussed that a little bit and I was like, ooh, no, no, don't spin cat hair. So yeah, anyway, that's kind of fun. Bison and wool. So let me know in the comments below if you want to have a video of um, watching that process of spinning. I would be happy to do that. So um, I think that's it for spinning. Yeah. It is. So that's it for spinning. I do um, think that I'll get to some of that this week. Um, I do have fiber coming to dye. It should be here mm, today or tomorrow. So um, that will be fun. Um, and again, that is, I have some sock yarn coming um, and then the bulky yarn and some sport weight. So a little update, I did talk about bringing in um, cotton and I am having a little bit of a time finding a distributor. So if you know of one, can you put that in the comment below? Um, that would be a big help. I, I was thinking Pima cotton because I have used Pima cotton in the past for personal projects. And it really has a soft yet bouncy, you know, a bounciness to it. So uh, some cotton, like I'm thinking dishy, like if I'm using, because uh, I, I do dish cloths out of dishy, which is from Knit Picks. And um, it, it's really uh, kind of rough on my hands, um, which is great for dish cloths. Um, not so much for something that you want to wear um, right against your skin. So Pima Cotton is kind of what I was looking at. So if you know of a distributor, 
um, just pop it in the comments below. That would be very helpful and I would appreciate it. Um, cause I would like to bring the Pima cotton, um, to my shop for those, uh, of us who have, um, allergies to wool. Um, cotton is a great alternative. Also linen. Oh, linen would be a good one to bring. Oh, I didn't think of that one. I'll have to look, do a little bit of research into the linen. Bamboo is nice too, but I, it's very difficult to find. <laughs> um those kind of distributors um so the company that i go through they just have wool um, products uh, they don't have the cellulose so anyway um, that'd be helpful if you have any ideas just pop it in the comments below um, and i'll go from there so um i think that's all i have for you today I hope you guys are enjoying uh, the weather wherever you're at. I hope you're getting a lot of knitting in or crochet um, or making whatever it is that you're making. Um, it's I, I know as I'm transitioning to uh, spring and summer that normally my knitting goes down a little bit. So it'll be interesting to see how that works out this year since I'm doing the markets. I'll need to keep on knitting throughout. Um, I always knit socks, but as far as garments and things like that, um, I don't typically keep up. Um, I don't make sweaters in the summer, mostly because they're really hot. <laughs> and so wool is very warm. And if you're, you know, sitting out on the back deck in 100 degree weather, you don't want to have a big um, garment a sweater or cardigan on your lap keeping you extra warm so that's kind of where I, that's going I think <laughs> so yep that's all I have for you guys this week I hope you have a great day and I'll see you in the next video